Well, hey there, everybody. Welcome to another week of Cambridge Inside Out. I kind of blew it off last time because of my summer school duties and having to write exams or grade exams. I don't remember which it was at the time. So anyway, I'm still here, you know, haven't run away. Um, one of the things that I thought I might do is, is something I had hoped I'd have uh, the last time I did shows here it was because um, I did a bit of a feature about Starlight Square. You know, like, and I, I'm actually going to, uh, I'm in the process of adding additional images to that. But one of the things that I, I really wanted to get, which wasn't quite available at the time, which hopefully is displaying reasonably well right now, um, was that there was a, there were a number of group photos taken on June 30th, which was the last day of um, uh, the, of Starlight Square before it started getting dismantled, right, with, with that fellow Brian in the middle here sort of being the, in charge of doing the dismantling just like he was in charge of building the the entire facility up and it was it was interesting doing the big group picture you know there were there were a lot of the people in the picture or people who were played very intrinsic fundamental roles in the development of the all of Starlight Square including Matt Boys Watson uh and Nina Berg who were sort of really <laughs> probably more involved than anybody. And of course, Michael Monastheme. Of course, all the political people also showed up, some of whom had played zero role whatsoever. But yeah, at least we had supporters like I think Sambal Siddiqui could be said she was been a supporter from the start. And certainly Mayor Denise Simmons, you know, I'm tucked in here, uh, sort of in the back here. Uh, it's a group of ne'er-do-wells. Anyway, it was quite a lot of fun. And um you know, I think it was um, kind of a nice way of capping off the um, the adventure, which lasted really almost four years. Um, I think one thing worth mentioning, not to obsess too much more on Starlight Square, but the uh, um, it, it was always viewed as kind of a pilot. You know, it was an emergency intervention uh, in the time of COVID, but it was always seen by all those who were involved as something of a pilot uh, for something that might be permanent down the road. Starlight Square was never meant to be permanent. It was just made out of, you know, Jersey barriers, some steel bars and some scrim and, and some wood and stuff, you know. But um, it's now it's all gone, right? I, I mean, I, I took a series of photos as it slowly but surely returned itself to a parking lot. Now you can park there. You know, what was once a, what, what did the, the motto said? What was once a place for parking is now a place for people. And I guess what was for the last few years a place for people is at least for the short term, a place for parking now, uh, which I, I think some of the local businesses there, especially the H Mart are pretty appreciative of that fact. Uh, you know, and you know, it's like, we can all wish motor vehicles away and worry about climate change or whatever, but you know, people still want to go shopping. They still are people who work there. They still appreciate having a place to park a car. So, um, you know, for, at least for the time being, it's it's getting some use um, that way. Anyway, we'll see what's next. Well, I mean, that's a discussion. I'll probably talk about that more in a bit here, but you know, the city's kind of, uh, they're, they've been preparing this so-called uh, request for information uh, where they're you know trying to get some interest going for what might happen on that lot. I think the notion about that lot remaining a surface parking lot from now to the end of time is probably not part of anybody's vision, quite honestly. But I do want to point out that that parking lot used to be where the Central Square uh, Theater was. You entered on Mass Ave, uh, and then there was a large structure back there, which was, which was a theater. So it was a, it was an, you could say it was an entertainment venue once upon a time. And most people who talk about this still talk about how it ought to become some out of housing, but we are, we have an ongoing debate about what shape that would take. Uh, and also an entertainment venue. I think I think last time I did the program, I was relating some conversation I had with one of the abutting property owners who had some very interesting ideas about how the sort of the public entertaining uh, part of star of the, whatever the new starlight, if it were to exist on that same space, might actually front Mass Ave and take down some existing buildings and then build back. So there's some creativity possible if um, if the city chooses to work cooperatively with abutting property owners. 
I think I'll just leave it at that. You know, I think um, uh, there's definitely some good ideas to be had and, and uh, you know, we'll see. Um, anyway, um, another thing I was going to mention today, sort of in the spirit of appreciation, you know, very much appreciating um, all of the people who put in so much effort to making something like Starlight Square kind of a fun place most of the time, not always, but most of the time for several years. Um, you know, I, as many of you will know, I, I teach mathematics, uh, you know, at, currently it's Harvard Extension School and Harvard Summer School, you know, I used to work at MIT, out at Wellesley College, whatever. So I've been teaching mathematics for a long, long time. But honestly, these days, the most fun I have of all really is Harvard Summer School. You know, when I teach Harvard Summer School and I teach every, or at least I have been for the last six weeks teaching uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday in the mornings. Um, but one of the nice things about summer school, and it was just some observation I made when we had a little bit of a faculty mixer during, I think it was the very first week, uh, which was that there are many of the people who teach in the Harvard summer school who come from all over the world. You know, some really good friends, they come from Italy uh, every year. And, you know, we've become close, you know, really good friends, but, um, and we have often have lunch together. You know, and then when this, you know, I, after this weekend, they'll be taking planes back to, you know, Italy, you know, to resume their regular lives. And there's a lot of other people or another friend's going up to Montreal and another person's going who lives in Harlem is going to be living out of New York City. Um, but the, the, the thing that really struck me was it, it was a movie that I remembered some years ago called Brigadoon. And the whole premise, it was kind of a, a ridiculous premise, of course, but it was this, it was this mythical town in, um, I think, Scotland. This was with Gene Kelly, Van Johnson, Sid Charisse, who's always a, a good eyeful. And um, the, um, the idea was that they didn't know it when they got there, but this, this mythical town only comes into existence once per century. And then, uh, you know, and then people have this incredible day and then when the day is over, it just disappears and then just comes back another century later, you know, so it's it's like that. So I'm mentioning this only because um, it occurred to me that teaching in a Harvard summer school is a little like going to Brigadoon. You go there, you teach your class, you enjoy your uh, some people teach in a three week program. Some people are just doing two week programs intensive for some of the high school age kids. And, uh, you know, I do a seven week program, uh, but then as soon as it's done, everybody just disappears. And then a year later, you know, there'll be the first little faculty mixer. And then it's like, Tom, how are you? You know, all of the people, uh, you know, so I just want to express a lot of appreciation for all the wonderful people who I spend time with um, every summer, but, you know, every summer also brings new people. You know, Thomas uh, Panaya is, uh, teaches globalization and global justice. And we are like recurring friends. He also considers himself an honorary citizen of Cambridge because he's lived here in the past and he loves Cambridge more than anyone else. Really, he does, even though he lives in Montreal. One really wonderful fellow. Um, yeah, another friend, uh, Bruno, who teaches economics of emerging markets in Asia and Eastern Europe. Um, uh, another fellow from Italy is a fellow named Duccio, who's really just a larger than life, you know, visions of Luciano Preferati. I mean, you know, a wonderful person to be around. Even the administrative staff, like, who are really in charge of the whole summer school, like Sandra uh, Nadaf or Karen Flood, are just, they're just wonderful people. And I just enjoy spending my summers with, with these folks. Uh, and I could go on and on. I, you know, the one thing that's funny for me is, you know, I spend part of my life dealing with civic stuff and, you know, Cambridge related things where, uh, you know, everything is not to be mean about it, but it, things can get a little petty and selfish, <laughs> you know, and, uh, and I have this wonderful privilege of getting to spend time who think about the whole world and um, one, one gentleman who actually works with the United Nations. And he does trainings for, of United Nations employees in negotiation, you know. And I get to have lunch with these people. It's a it's a it's a it's a great gig, you know. Um, 
there's one uh, course, uh, see, uh, Katri and um, Nusiainen, I would mispronounce her, and Mike Sexton, who are people I met who teach a course in negotiation and organi organizational conflict resolution. And I was just thinking about that today and thought, maybe I should ask them to come and meet with the Cambridge City Council sometime. But honestly, they don't need it as much this term as they did in the last few terms when they could have used a little uh, bit of conflict uh, resolution and negotiation skills. You know? So anyway, I'm just saying this all here as sort of a, as a little bit of a love letter. And by the way, when I went to the Cambridge Library uh, on the way home from work a few days ago, I said, I think it's time I take Brigadoon back out and, and uh, treat myself to a movie. So I'm going to do that maybe later tonight or tomorrow. Um, all right. So anyway, um, so I've got a few more. I've got my students taking their final exam on Friday, and uh, I'll be grading all weekend, I'm sure. Uh, and, uh, you know, and then we then we move on to other things, you know, <laughs> because Brigadoon will be will be gone for until next summer. Um, another thing that's happened since I last did these programs was um, there were a few major or really significant uh, public events that happened. I think it was the the Cambridge the big Cambridge dance party, or maybe that had already happened. I don't remember now. I think it already had happened. But um, at the end of July, the last weekend of July, every year for now nine years, this is the ninth year now. They we put together the Cambridge Jazz Festival. So that it ran, runs on Saturday and Sunday. It's a free event up at Danahy Park, and. You know, we went up there and spent most, most of the time up there for the jazz festival. By the way, I'm not really the world's biggest jazz fan, but I do enjoy these events and I enjoy the music too. You know, it's great. I got to spend, I think, Saturday, was it last Saturday? Anyway, just spent much of the day with Mayor Simmons uh, in that we were both, as we like to say, we were freeloading off of an MIT tent. But the following day on Sunday, the mayor had her own tent <laughs> there, you know, which are, you know, so it catered, you know, with some beverages. And uh, it was just really a wonderful time. And the fact that my neighbor, Larry Ward, uh, who lives two doors from me, um, is one of the, the co-founders, along with Ron Savage, of the Cambridge Jazz Festival. And the person who does much of the logistics is um, Lynn Fan, who is my first floor tenant. So, you know, Cambridge Jazz Festival feels sort of like a bit of a block party here, you know, for some of us, you know, we, um, you know, so many of the, my wonderful neighbors are actually actively involved in doing this. Actually, you know, in, this, in the spirit of appreciation, I, you know, I, sometimes I, I think we all neglect to express appreciation for some of the great people we live around and who do wonderful things. So I think maybe I'll do another little shout out from one of my other neighbors, Helen Snively, who is like the social glue who pulls everything together, whether it's um, stuff swaps, um, uh, community garden coordinators, plant swaps. Um, you know, there's a thing that happens at the Cambridge Community Center on Calendar Street uh, that she always is very involved in, in, you know, gathering goods from people for reuse, you know, and, you know, and she's, we, we both have been involved in recycling related stuff for years. But again, you know, I'm, I'm not, I may live in a sort of a mixed residential commercial thing with a school across the street. It's not like your traditional living on the block with where, you know, rows and rows of neighbors, but somehow we've managed to have some pretty amazing people here uh, who, who I live around. And I'm really grateful for that. Uh, another event that's coming up that I go to every year without fail. So, and I invite you to come as well is the um, the old time baseball game. You now, Steve Buckley, born and raised in Cambridge, uh, Buck puts, the, and he's a sports writer for the Boston Herald. Um, the, uh, he and others organize this event. I've been doing, I think they've been doing it for 20 some odd years, 20, 23, 26 years, something like that now. And uh, it takes place on Thursday, August 22nd, you know, everything gets started around 7 p.m. up at St. Peter's Field, which is right on Sherman Street up in North Cambridge. And, um, you know, it's 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 a it's primarily a place where a lot of townies will go. But it's not just townies. And there's a lot of the political people will show up as well. It's pretty good for FaceTime. And it really is. It's like a lot of Cambridge events. It's it's not only an event. 
you know, like whether it's music or baseball or whatever, but it's like a reunion, you know? So, um, you know, if you're around, I encourage you to come on up there. I always get to spend a little time and, uh, you know, shut the place down with my good friend, Glenn Kucher, the original, the creator of the original Cambridge Inside Out, you know, and, and uh, a mentor of, above, uh, among, my, above all mentor, mentors for me personally. Um, you know, and, you know, he's not the only one of, of my many friends there. I mean, we've had some major league, you know, Red Sox stars. I don't know if we have any featured major players this time around, but, you know, in past years, I remember Oil Can Boyd from the Boston Red Sox pitching there. Roger Clemens came and pitched. Pedro Martinez came and pitched a few innings. And he really looked just like Pedro. It was amazing. Um, you know, and um, back when he was still living, uh, Johnny Pesky would be there every year. Uh, anyway, it's a it's really a great time. So if you have a chance on August, Thursday, August twenty second, I invite you to um, you know come up there. They you know they sell hot dogs and uh, and it's and the, and the baseball is actually pretty good. There's a lot of you know college players and um, you know it's and from, and a few former major leaguers like Lou Merloni from the Red, Boston Red Sox. So anyway, you know, come on up. I think you won't, you won't regret it uh, if you come by. I, I think maybe I'll, I'll talk a little bit about some of the civic stuff, you know, my own personal hobby. Um, one of the things that's sort of remarkable about right now, um, and I think I, I might actually do another little piece of share screening just to uh, emphasize this here. So bear with me as I negotiate around here. Right. So again, the old time baseball game is uh, Thursday, August 22nd, starting. Actually, it's starting. If I said 7 p.m., change that. I meant to say 6 p.m. You know, there's some festivities and things that get started. So I'm not quite sure when the actual baseball game gets going. But, you know, everything is really kind of worth it. Um, you know, and, and it, they, they do fundraising. They do various raffles. You name it. It's, a, it's just a great time. Um, but one of the things I also want to mention was that there was sort of a, I, in my memory at least, a kind of an unprecedented number of Cambridge City boards and commissions that are currently seeking members. You know, and, you know, as I've said many times over, you know, serving on a city board or commission is really like, um, you know, getting to go to school with free tuition. You know, you learn a lot. Uh, you get to be a good citizen, you know, contribute. You know, they basically want people who are pretty good at interacting with people. So if you're if you're prone to hostility, maybe this isn't really the thing for you. But, um, you know, it is a good time. So I think the sort of in reverse order of when they were posted, I think the latest one, which is due on um, Monday, April, uh, sep excuse me, September 30th, uh, is if uh, you would like to serve on the Cambridge Veterans Advisory Committee. Right. That's uh, um, you know something of importance. Um, I believe they're still uh, accepting membership now for there's members sought for the safety improvement project on Cambridge Street as a working group. Of course, some of you know be, if you don't mind a little editorializing, some of the things that are part of what's going to happen on Cambridge Street are non-negotiable. I mean, they're going to put into bike lanes whether you like bike lanes or not. So largely. What you're going to do is sort of argue, you know, basically get some input on how to do things as well as you can um, within the confines of certain policies that they, the city considers non-negotiable, right? So um, anyway, so this is everywhere from Inman Street, Inman Square, um, bombing all the way down to Second Street, right? And again. So much of this is whether they want to admit it openly or not, though they sometimes do. So much of these reconstructions of streets are driven not so much by larger concerns, but singularly by uh, the desire to meet this cycling safety ordinance. And then so much of everything else is really just sort of icing on that cake. Um, there's also, for those who are a little more international in your viewpoint, um, there is a uh, the Cambridge Commission on Immigrant Rights and Citizenship is still seeking members, uh, and and the deadline for application is September 9th, right? So if that's something that floats your boat, I certainly encourage you to um, consider applying for that. 
Um, there are actually two of the main, the two, I guess you could argue the biggest, the most significant, actually we have at least three uh, major squares in the city, you know, Porter Square, Central Square, Harvard Square. Um, there is not an ordinance creating a Porter Square advisory committee, though there is certainly a Porter Square neighborhood uh, coalition uh, citizen group. But uh, there's an ordinance that established the Harvard Square Overlay District and with it, the Harvard Square Advisory Committee. And some of the members may be rotating off and new members perhaps rotating in uh, and many others hopefully continuing and uh, doing their good work with the Harvard Square Advisory Committee. Uh, and the deadline for applying for that one, if that's uh, of interest to you, uh, is next Monday, August 12th. And one thing, of course, I have to remind myself to reapply um, is we're also seeking, the city manager is also seeking members for the Central Square Advisory Committee, which again also was created pursuant to the creation of the uh, Central Square Overlay District some years ago. Uh, you know, and there are certain uh, duties of that committee, just like with the Harvard Square Committee that's laid out in the ordinance. And there are some, I guess you might call soft duties also associated with um, Central Square Advisory Committee and other duties that actually came to it because of other zoning legislation that happened um, since. For example, I think in the Central Square Overlay District, they originally we, we would uh, review various development proposals, but sometimes somebody who's going to be doing something in the square just chooses to bring it before the advisory committee. For example, when a Target store was going to open, they came before us. Um, and the, um, I think I, I once spoke with the head of the community development department after the K2C2 process and suggested that maybe the Central Square Advisory Committee could also play a role in some of the non-zoning recommendations that came out of that committee, having to do with such things as placemaking and such. And everybody agreed that was a good idea. So that's part of our purview as well, whether it's written into the ordinance or not. So I intend to reapply for that. Um, I certainly hope and expect to be reappointed, but we'll see. Uh, you know, and um, anyway, so that's all. The deadline for application for that is August 12th uh, as well. There's um, the Foundry Building, um, you know, or as Bob Healy once said when it was gifted to the city, the Foundry Building, this is going to be a problem because everybody wanted a piece of the action. Well, eventually the Foundry Building was refitted, turned into a real community space. Uh, and with it came a, a foundry advisory committee to advise the city and the, also the Cambridge Redevelopment Authority and their, um, the, 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 the team that they chose to manage the property. So um, anyway, if it's something of interest to you, and I would imagine even though that would be applicable for anyone from any part of the city, that people certainly in East Cambridge would more more than likely have more interest in that. But again, it is it's not restricted, even though it's the Foundry building is located on Rogers Street in East Cambridge. Um, uh, the Foundry is not is really a citywide facility. So, you know, if you have some interest in that and what what, what it can be, um, you know, consider applying. Um, there's uh, also, and this is the last of the, the current ones, there have been a lot of them been opening up and closing down lately um, is there was, uh, I didn't expect this, but it was one other person, I'm not even sure whom, is choosing to step down from the Cambridge Redevelopment Authority. It was just recently a new appointment to the uh, the Redevelopment Authority. Uh, and the, um, and apparently one of the uh, current members will be stepping down soon so they will be seeking uh applicants and again the deadline for that that's a kind of a big responsibility um is uh monday september 9th as well so i mean there's the whole list here and um you know anyway i just think it's something you may uh may be of some interest to you so it was interesting because i'm going to pivot a little bit here toward talking about what happened to city council meeting last night at the one meeting that's held during the summer, the so-called midsummer meeting, which was held on August 5th. It was actually uh, one city council order that called for 
creating a listserv so that if you're on the listserv, you would be alerted to when there's um, openings on any of the city boards and commissions. So you would, that you would, you find out about it pretty quickly. I will, however, say that for a very long time, every single time as the press release goes out that they're seeking members, not only do I post it up on my Cambridge Civic Journal site, but I also maintain a page on the CCJ forum, which has all of the current boards and commissions that are seeking members. And the city also has a page that does exactly the same. I mean, I like to think that I embarrassed, I may have embarrassed them in a little bit, at least, into uh, doing that, right? So it's funny how, you know, I certainly I've been doing this for a long, long time. The city council order doesn't choose to ever acknowledge what I do these days. It's more like, like, well, here's an idea. Let's let's do what Robert Winters is doing, you know, and, and um, when, wow, what a great idea, right? So... Anyway, so that I thought that was just a little funny little addition on, on the agenda for um, last night's city council meeting. Um, you might as well start to pivot a little bit about this here right now, but then I'll, I'll take my little artificial break and, and continue. Um, one of the items that began the meeting, by the way, the city council meeting last night was held entirely in Zoom remotely. No explanation given whatsoever. I mean, obviously, during the height of COVID, everything was in Zoom, but there's been a very steady progress for most city, well, certainly city council and most city boards, the planning board and the election commission being two notable exceptions, unfortunately, where they still continue to do things almost entirely within Zoom, which I don't think is a good thing. I mean, I'll, I'll go to bat any day of the week, you know, I'll argue the case for having in-person meetings. There are just certain things about the way human beings interact, uh, which is just not optimal when, in fact, you're just talking to a camera through a tunnel. You know, facial expressions, there's a lot of nuance that happen in actual human meetings. So uh, I'm, I was a little disappointed that there was a city council meeting entirely in Zoom with no explanation whatsoever why they chose to do that. And maybe there were good reason. Maybe people were uh, were just unavailable, but you know, you could see for the most part from where the backgrounds of there, where they were, most of them were in town. There was one person, Joan Pickett was absent. So, you know, her absence wasn't going to be relieved by Zoom. So I, I just don't understand why they chose to do that. I thought it was kind of a I mean, maybe it's maybe they're doing renovations at City Hall and City Hall just was not a great place but if so you should say that you know public information transparency you know that you know the the whole story right anyway so they, they did have a meeting and um and it you know lasted four and a half hours or something and uh i'll certainly talk about that a little bit here in a second here but again that was sort of unfortunate i will say just with the one piece of old business uh from a previous meeting that was apparently made um subject to uh, somebody filed for reconsideration of a vote for the purpose of getting more information for skeptical city councilor was one uh, city council order calling the, for the decriminalization of natural psychedelics. You know, Timothy Leary. <laughs> I think he was uh, doing his business out of Harvard University in those days. So apparently what's old comes around again, right? So um, maybe we should uh, elect, elect a Timothy Leary sort of city councilor one of these days. Anyway, uh, I'm going to take my half a second break here, and then I'll re return momentarily on Cambridge Inside Out. <laughs> 